All right, guys, I would like to welcome Jason with BioSTEM Technology. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jason Maschewski, CEO and co-founder of BioSTEM Technologies. One second, sorry. Listed on OTC under the stock uh, symbol BSEM. So Biosome Technologies is a FDA registered and A to be accredited tissue bank focused on leading regenerative medicine. We harness the natural properties of perinatal tissue and the development, manufacture, and commercialization of tissue allografts for the regenerative therapy space. Our products are used in multiple uh, channels, including the private office, ambulatory surgery center, hospital outpatient wound care centers, and within the federal uh, system through the VA and DOD. At our core, our mission is to manufacture products that change lives. Our vision is to be synonymous with it, uh, for excellence and development of products that change people's lives. And we execute our mission and vision through three key principles, quality, compassion, and innovation. So talking about uh, some excep exceptional growth trajectory uh, items over the last uh, 12 to 16 months, we address a multi-billion dollar commercial opportunity, including wound management, surgical and ocular repair in a highly differentiated space. We had a remarkable growth in 2023, including net revenue of Q4, increase with 1,355% year over year to 11 and a half million and gross profit up by 1,535% or 10.2 million for the same period. Q4 sales uh, in that private office space surged by 95%. We are strategically looking and moving forward on acquiring compelling assets, including existing companies with robust product lines, synergistic patent portfolios, and innovative products such as biofilms, collagen-based products, cord tissue-based products, durable medical equipment, and non-traditional wound care solutions. We're expecting to broaden our reach into new markets in 2024, expanding our penetration into hospital wound care, hospital outpatient, as well as other wound and surgical applications. And last but not least, we plan to initiate two DFU studies, uh, early, late Q3, early Q4, to represent our bioretain process and demonstrate our superior, superiority in the marketplace. So real quick, I'll take a poll from everybody in the audience. Does anybody know how many current Medicare beneficiaries there are in the United States? Anybody? There's 65 million. And over the next five years, does anybody know how many Medicare beneficiaries will be here in the United States? 80. So exponential growth, just specifically the patient population. And does anybody know how many uh, of these patients are subject to diabetes? One in five. So we're on an exponential curve on both sides, right? We have more and more patients coming into the patient population pool and diabetes is a, is a massive is issue here in the States and all over the world, to be honest. So let's talk about a little bit more about chronic wounds and, and our specific uh, use case of our products. So chronic wounds currently affect nearly 7 million Americans here in the United States. That's one in four individuals have a family member with a chronic wound. Every four seconds, a patient develops a wound in the United States. Every 30 seconds, a diabetic patient undergoes an amputation. And why is that significant? Uh, diabetic patients have a 60% chance of death within five years post an amputation. So think about that for a second. It's a significant problem here in the United States. 25% of people living with diabetes will develop a foot ulcer. So the stats I was telling about earlier, about 60 million patients and 80 million patients, 25% will develop a diabetic foot ulcer. So what are the challenges, uh, specifically these stagnant wounds, these chronic wounds that end up sitting in an area of inflammation uh, or 
uh, irritation, and we can't really close the loop in the sense of getting this wound over the hump to start closing it and move towards healing. Um, it, it, it ends up being an effect on, on the healing cascade and where, where it fails and gets stuck. And some of those issues uh, specifically are irritation, uh, poor circulation, oxidative stress, uh, infection or biofilm on the surface of that uh, wound site, cellular senescence. Uh, all these are major issues in which we end up having a wound that ends up staying in a chronic state. Specifically, those wound types are defined as diabetic foot ulcers, like I mentioned earlier, DFUs, venous leg ulcers or VLUs, partial, uh, excuse me, pressure ulcers, uh, and those are typically found either sacral ulcers or areas in which uh, a, a patient has been sitting or applying pressure for a long period of time. And then last but not least, surgical wounds. So what is the differentiation in regards to our products? and why we feel that our products add a significant value to our patient population. So Biostem uh, manufactures, like I said earlier, placental-derived amniotic tissues. Uh, we've developed a, a, a key process called the bioretain process, and we looked at how the, the process of placental tissue over the last 20 or 25 years uh, kind of ended up stagnant. There was no real development. There was no way to, in it, there was no innovation in this space. So we looked at upstream and downstream areas of where we can improve the product. And why we call it bioretain is because it really retains all the natural properties of perinatal tissue. And those, some of those properties are the extracellular matrix, growth factors, anti-inflammatory cytokines. And the benefits of those are it prevents infection and local contamination, it exhibits antimicrobial properties, it minimizes moisture loss by acting as a barrier. It establishes a, a repair framework for damaged tissue. And how it does that is because it has these nice intact collagen structures that I'll go into a little bit further in the presentation on. Our product portfolio looks like this. We offer two products in the wound care segment, both in the private office, our AmnioRap 2 brand, as well as our Vendage AC brand. Um, in the surgical market, we offer a vendage that's typically found in the hospital outpatient center or the ambulatory surgery center, HOPD or ASC. And then in the optic area, we offer our vendage optic product. So what is the regulatory framework for these products? Um, typically, you see you know, drugs working down what's called the BLA pathway or devices working down 510K or PMA route. Our products are unique. They sit in this category called 361. Um, no different than a tissue transplant in the sense of an organ. Um, that's kind of the framework that we are in. Um, the unique aspect of it is we have what's called tissue re reference group or TRG letters supporting this regulatory framework for all of our products. So they're minimally manipulated. They're for homologous use, meaning what they do in the donor is equal to what they do in the recipient. And then they're manufactured via uh, GTP are good tissue practices. And like I said, they're regulated by the FDA for the risk of disease and transmission. Typically what you find in the BLA or uh, biologic, either cell or gene therapy is, is over here on the right, which is the 351 or BLA process. That process is pretty arduous. Um, I know there's some people in the audience that ha have gone through that process. Uh, it, it involves going through phase one through phase three clinical trials and, and ex extensive amount of capital to, to work through it. Um, also, from a manufacturing process, the level of manufacturing is also leveled up. So talking about kind of our network and how we go about procuring tissue and then ultimately delivering that tissue to a recipient. So we start with expected moms. Uh, we have a, an amazing network of, of um, collection agencies throughout the United States. Typically, we work with a core of four groups, and they do forward education, um, pr prospective mothers looking to deliver and talking about the value and benefits of donating their placenta. Um, mom has to go through a rigorous consent, as well as a complete social and medical history. And we only currently work with uh, successful cesarean sections that were planned. Um, I know some people say, well, you have a lot of vaginal births in the United States, why can't you use those, right? Um, it's honestly about timing. Uh, a planned C-section happens on, at, at that time. And to have a recovery partner in the recovery room 
uh, with a vaginal birth, it's, it's an unknown number. So it just makes it a little bit more efficient. Um, on, the, on the last bit is, is the tissue is sent to our facility within 24 hours of recovery. And then we process that tissue within 48 hours. And like I said earlier about the bioretain process, this is an area where we found a lot of improvement and it's involving the media that we use to actually store that material after it's been uh, recovered. And then what kind of shipping uh, constraints that we put on that shipping uh, to ship that material here to, to our facility. And then uh, as we work through our manufacturing process, we test that material for my microbial growth uh, as well as reviewing all of the documentation that was provided by our um, recovery partner. Um, the product currently has a four-year shelf life and we're actually working to get a five-year shelf life with the product. Um, to date, we've recovered uh, over 5,000 uh, placentas and we've distributed over 100,000 grafts throughout uh, the United States. A little bit about our facility. Um, our, we're located in uh, just north of Fort Lauderdale in Pompano Beach. Uh, we own our own facility. It's about 6,000 square feet. We have over 30 years of experience in processing the tissue. I'll talk about our team in a little bit later, but we have some key team members from the University of Miami Tissue Bank uh, on the development and manufacturing side. Uh, it's about 1,500 square feet of ISO clean room space. We're expanding that to 3,000 square feet. Uh, we're actively uh, working on that construction currently. Uh, and we anticipate that at the end of Q3. Uh, from an environmental monitoring perspective, we, we monitor 24-7. Uh, being in South Florida, we have to have backup power for hurricanes and all those things. Uh, and, and the fun fact is we're 18 feet above sea level. So I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but in South Florida, that means something. Um, on the capacity side, uh, we currently have the capacity to manufacture about 30,000 square centimeters a month, and we're expanding that capacity to be north of 75,000 square centimeters uh, by the end of this year. So um, just talking a little bit more in depth about bioretain and why it's a unique process to us and, and the IP that we have around that. Um, one of the bigger components is, is just simply how we're handling and, and minimally manipulating our tissue. Um, we don't use any vigorous scraping methodologies or um, aggressive techniques in regards to uh, removing the amnion chorion layer from the placenta. At the same time, we don't use any hypo or hypertonic solutions that would also alter the molecular structure of the tissue. And then third, we don't use any uh, antibiotics in the process or any sort of cryopreservants. Um, the product is actually stored at room temperature in a dry format. So we don't use any cryoprotectants currently with the product. And then uh, second to last, we don't use any uh, sort of freeze drying methods or any method in which would cause a huge induction of heat or cold to the process, as well as any sort of negative or positive pressure to the process. And I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later on as to why that's a key component. Um, and then last but not least, in regards to sterilization, our product is sterilized to 10 to the negative six, so sterility of any sort of implantable device. But at the same time, uh, we don't use a harsh sterilization. Um, there's other methods in which we sterilize. Uh, these products can be sterilized, varying from E-beam to gamma to critical CO2. And what we've found is actually by processing in this manner, we actually have the lowest dose rate on our tissue uh, for to meet our 10 to the negative six sterility. Um, and, and I can talk about a little bit more about those properties as well. So um, this is uh, uh, several staining of our tissue, the actual tissue grafts themselves. And what you find is we have some really nice um, structure uh, as well as fibronectin and collagen structures within the tissue. Um, the other element that I wanna talk about is, is really what's unique about bioretain. And this really ends up being uh, I think one of the differentiators of our product compared to our competitors. If you see this green area is actually strands of collagen that are found naturally in our tissue. When we look at our competitor based products, these strands are all disrupted. And, and we, we feel strongly that with these nice long strand, strands of collagen that we have a super highway for fibroblast cells to actually migrate down and actually uh, work at a uh, more efficient pace inside the wound bed. And we're able to um, maintain these nice long collagen structures 
through the bioretain process. But at the same time, when I talked about uh, sterilization earlier, you know, using uh, aggressive sterilization methods actually break down these collagen structures. Uh, two elements that I can share, and we have we published a, a peer-reviewed scientific uh, paper around the uh, elements inside of our tissue. I think these are two key elements: uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, our product against our peer competitor, um, as well as PDGF beta uh, in regards to our concentration versus our competitor. Um, these are just two elements. There's a, a several litany of other elements that we actually have tested against peer competitor product. And what we found is we actually retain a lot more elements in the tissue. Um, to talk a little bit about uh, the opportunity in our market, um, you know, the U.S. wound care market, as I, as I mentioned earlier in regards to the patient population, it's growing at an exponential rate. Um, the U.S. wound market is uh, roughly about a billion dollars in 2022. Uh, surgical market is just under a billion dollars. Um, in 2022, we did about 6.9 million in revenue. In 23, we did 16.7 million in revenue, 11 and a half of that coming in Q4. We see this market growing, like I said uh, earlier, exponentially, you know, in the next four to five years, over a billion dollars in, in growth. Um, this just kind of highlights, you know, our growth strategy and trajectory as a, as a company and as an organization. Um, we started in 18 with these products. We started working through what's called the American Association Tissue Banks or AATB accreditation uh, and getting that gold standard for our facility. It's one of 34 facilities that actually have that uh, accreditation here in the United States. Um, and then obviously we all know what happens here in this area where um, uh, you know, we can't distribute to uh, outpatient uh, surgery centers and things of that nature because of COVID. But really the last three years is what's uh, important and, and, and what I can share with you. Um, we received uh, Part B coverage for our flagship product, Amio Wrap 2, uh, in 2022. We got pricing for that product in Q4 of 2022 uh, in several local MACs, uh, two, two specific local MACs. And then um, at the beginning of uh, 2024, we now have coverage across all seven MACs and, and pricing established across the whole United States. So this really was kind of, you know, the evolution of developing our own process, our IP, and then really, you know, starting to work through the commercial channels to get distribution of our product. In regards to our patent portfolio, um, right now we have uh, patents in either provisional status or issued. Uh, we have 24 patents in the provisional status around placental tissue, three issued. Um, specifically around our bioretained process, we have four in the provisional status and one issued. Um, 37 in a technology platform called Oxacel, it's an ACPX unit. That works around actually micronizing uh, solid tissue types into uh, other components. Um, and we did that acquisition early in uh, 23. So currently we have uh, 28 uh, patents in the provisional status, 41 issued for a total portfolio of about 69 patents. I do. Uh, I can share with that later. <laughs> um, so talking about clinical trials and, and you know, we've done a, an amazing job of developing the science around our products and differentiate it from a peer reviewed uh, science side. Uh, but this year is gonna be a pivotal year for us. We're actually working towards now clinical evidence and demonstrating why our bioretain process is, is in, instrumental in, in getting uh, these wounds healed. So we're initiating two clinical studies uh, BRAMDFU101 and BRACDFU101. Uh, the AM is for amnion only membrane, and the AC is amnion chorion. Uh, we're focusing on DFUs, diabetic foot ulcers, initially, and we just brought on a, a key hire, uh, Nick McCoy, to lead this clinical ops team uh, throughout this process. Nick was instrumental working at a group called Tissue Tech or BioTissue, uh, working through some of their BLAs around these types of tissue types, uh, as well as on the ocular graphs that there's been successful in commercializing and distributing. We expect to start these trials in late Q3, early Q4. To give a little, little bit of a high level of what that study uh, structure looks like, um, the objective is obviously to look at diabetic foot ulcers uh, compared to standard of care. It's a multi-center site, it's randomized. Um, the eligibility is a patient that has a DFU that is located below the malleola, 
and at least four weeks in duration and between the size of one square centimeter and 20 square centimeters. The uh, pre-treatment is a two week run-in uh, with standard of care to prepare the wound. And then the uh, randomization criteria is a patient showing less than 30% reduction in the wound size. And those with more than 30% reduction are screened and failed. Um, last but not least, the tr treatment pr protocol, like I mentioned, is randomized one-to-one. -one, and it's tre treated weekly. The patient is treated weekly for 12 weeks. Um, something that's unique to this study design is we actually added a crossover option, which allows us to actually cross over those standard of care patients that weren't being treated with the product uh, and getting treated uh, with a product. So the goal there is obviously if you don't have uh, uh, wound closure that we're able to actually apply our product on the patient and move forward to wound closure. Um, the primary import is, is you know, effective wound closure within the treatment duration. This is just a high level of the, of the same study uh, just for our Amnion Corion product. So a little bit about our management team. Uh, like I said, my name is Jason Meshesky, CEO and co-founder of the organization. My co-founding partner, Andrew Van Burst, is the COO. He's in charge of leading all the manufacturing operations and quality aspect of our organization. Um, Mike Fortunato, our CFO, uh, worked in SEC enforcement in the Bay Area for six years and then also worked at Upwork uh, delivering and, and working on their S1 and uh, uplist, uplisting process. And then he was also head of technical accounting at Facebook. Um, we just brought on a chief commercial officer, Sean McCary. Uh, he was uh, pivotal in the leadership role at Oxygen, moving from you know sub uh, 10 million in sales uh, to north of over 100 million sales in a very short window. Um, specifically focusing on uh, cadaveric uh, nerve tissue uh, for um, nerve repair. And then last but not least, uh, Dr. Wendy Weston, who I mentioned earlier, is the head of our VP in R&D. She came over from the University of Miami Tissue Bank and actually worked at Vivex, which is a competitor company to ours uh, in the private space. Um, just a little bit about our board. Uh, we had two key and the new board members that we brought on board. Uh, Tom Dugan as, as the chairman of the board, uh, Tom served as CEO of Amniox or Biotissue, the company I mentioned earlier. He was also the president of Smith & Nephew's Wound Care Division. Um, Tom's a huge uh, asset to us. He's got over 30 plus years of uh, experience within the wound care uh, industry. And then also Pat Daly, uh, we added him. He's a, he's a global vice president of uh, uh, IQVIA, and he also was a CEO and co-founder of a company called Cohera that ultimately got purchased by KKR. Uh, they were focusing on a uh, unique uh, biological glue product. And then uh, last but not least is uh, Brandon Poe, who's our audit chair. He's currently the CFO at Midi Health and was the CFO at Gen Genome Medical. So some of the accomplishments that we achieved in 23 and some of the things that we're looking for in, in, into 2024. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we acquired an asset portfolio of uh, Oxacel Laboratories, which is the ACPX unit, um, two MIT uh, PhD grads who developed a really amazing technology platform to take solid tissue and morselize it into um, liquids uh, from a cellular and growth factor concentration standpoint. Um, we initiated, uh, like I mentioned, the launch of our AmnioRap2 brand. We got IRB approvals for our studies. Uh, we worked on a commercialization agreement with a company called Nova Bay Pharmaceuticals in our optic graphs. Uh, and we also engaged a key government uh, contracting uh, group called Level Government Services for our DOD and uh, VA contract vehicles. Uh, looking forward and ahead for 2024, um, we're going to continue to look to expand our product offerings uh, throughout geographical presences as well as site of services, uh, either hospital outpatient, surgical, et cetera. Um, we're looking to move uh, currently from OTC to a senior exchange, uh, and then also kind of continue to pursue our uh, DFU studies and then look to either VLU or pressure ulcer studies in the near term. So uh, just some key highlights. You know, we, we are uh, a manufacturer of placental tissue products using our proprietary bioretain process. Our industry is a multi-billion dollar in industry, whether it's pressure ulcers, venous leg ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, or surgical applications. We had an amazing uh, quarter in Q4, uh, as well as a year in 2023, and we look to continue that success throughout 2024. 
16.7 million in revenue in 2023, 1.67 million in adjusted EBITDA, uh, and a year over year revenue increase of 1,355%. Our facility is about 6,100 square feet. Uh, we're excited to continue to expand and, and service our providers and, and make an impact to our patients' lives with our products. And with that, questions? Go ahead. Uh, it's not. Um, so we got pricing for our products for and coverage for Medicare Part B for our products in, in late Q3 and it allowed us to commercialize our products in Q4. So, um, I, I don't know if there's really a bottleneck. Um, right now we have access to get... Um, north of 200 to 300 placentas on a monthly basis um, that will suffice our needs from a manufacturing perspective. Um, it's more about just getting the story out there. And that's kind of why I'm up here, to be honest. Um, it's really about getting our story about our products and how big of an impact it has to patient lives with our product, our process. Yeah, so we work uh, strategically with a group called Venture Medical. Uh, Venture Medical uh, has a boots on the ground force of over 250 individuals throughout the United States, um, and they service all seven MAC regions, so east coast to coast. No problem. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the question is, do we have any large cap or mid cap competitors? Um, I think the biggest purest comp right now in our space is MyMedics, MDXG. Um, I think Organogenesis is another competitor of ours uh, that are that are probably close to, you know, both are, uh, at least my medics is close to a billion dollars in market cap uh, and revenue of about 350 to 400 million. Um, I think that's the close. Uh, Organogenesis, O-R-G-O is the ticker. Um, how many physicians we have using the product? Yeah, I mean, it's been an exponential growth, <laughs> obviously. Um, I, we have metrics in regards to site of service, like where their practice is at, as well as um, uh, MAC region, so geographically where they're at. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm sorry, I can get it to you, but I don't know off the top of my head how specific number of, of physicians. Yes. Yeah, I would say uh, those two competitors may or may not be in that uh, analysis. Oh. Any other questions? Thank you, everybody. <laughs>